Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are looking at uh, the small perturbation theory, uh, which is uh, we are now looking at flow fields uh, rather than integral quantities. And uh, uh, in the previous classes, we had looked at velocity potential equation and small perturbation uh, theory uh, applied to uh, subsonic flows. Uh, so, uh, we are dealing with inviscid rotational flows and uh, therefore, these flows are uh, isentropic also. And uh, we had looked at the main steps that are followed to convert the velocity potential equation, which is a um, non-linear equation uh, in full to uh, a simpler linearized equations uh, using uh, small perturbations uh, that is it is uh, taken that a body in uh, uh, in a flow, uh, for example, it can be a, a thin air foil or a flat plate. It produces uh, a uniform flow is here, so V infinity. It produces very small changes to the uh, flow. That is, we have U prime, V prime, uh, W prime. They are very small uh, changes. So uh, uh, the velocity V. Uh, is written as v infinity plus u prime i plus v prime j plus w prime k and uh, a perturbation velocity was uh, a perturbation potential was defined which is u prime is do phi by do x v prime is do phi by do y and w prime is do phi by do z and using this we converted uh, a nonlinear equation into a linearized form uh, which had the form 1 minus m infinity square phi x x plus phi uh, y y plus phi z z equal to uh, 0. And we looked at the subsonic case and uh, there we looked at how we made a uh, transformation of variables so that uh, this in a two dimensional flow this can be converted uh, into uh, in zeta eta coordinates into a simple uh, Laplace equation uh, equal to 0. And from uh, there we understood that um, uh, that this is a actually you can get these solutions it is very similar to the incompressible uh, Laplace equation and uh, from there we got the uh, idea that uh, C p can be represented as C p 0 by 1 minus m infinity square. So, this is uh, uh, so uh, incompressible relations of C p over any um, particular body uh, such that it produces only small changes. Uh, if you consider such uh, cases, uh, then uh, the incompressible relations can be extended uh, to the domain of uh, compressible flows, uh, subsonic compressible flows and uh, the relation is given here and this uh, is known as the prandtl glaritz rule which is extensively used applied and there have been uh, uh, corrections later on, but the basic idea has not uh, changed. Okay. So, uh, that is for the case of uh, uh, subsonic flows, where uh, if you know the coefficients, uh, non-dimensional coefficients for incompressible flows, it can be extended to compressible domain using the prandtl doret rule. Now, in this particular uh, class, we will look at uh, uh, supersonic flows. In supersonic flows, uh, the value 1 minus m infinity square uh, in that particular uh, perturbation relation, it goes negative because m infinity is 
uh, greater than uh, 1. So, consequently we make a um, change uh, corresponding change is made. Um, so, it is written as minus of m infinity square minus 1. So, then if you make it then uh, it will become lambda square phi x x minus phi y y equal to 0 where lambda is square root of m infinity, m infinity square minus 1. Uh, this is applicable for um, flows which are uh, supersonic that is m infinity is uh, greater than 1. So, uh, now this uh, if you look at this particular equation uh, it is a, a wave equation. So, uh, a wave equation the general uh, solution is uh, given by f of x minus lambda plus g of x plus lambda, uh, where x minus lambda y and x plus lambda y uh, represent uh, specific lines in the domain along which uh, there is a propagation of information. They are also called as uh, characteristic uh, lines and uh, if you look at uh, this uh, uh, the angle which is uh, dy by dx, it turns out to be 1 by uh, lambda. You can take a general solution say uh, g is 0, phi is x minus uh, lambda y, uh, then dy by dx is 1 by lambda which is 1 by square root of m infinity square minus 1 and uh, mm, that those are uh, represented here okay, on the top, they are left running waves. Um, Okay, dy by dx equal to 1 by square root of m infinity square minus 1. We can then look at uh, the definition of a Mach angle. Hmm, the Mach angle is uh, nu is equal to sin inverse 1 by m or uh, sin nu is equal to uh, 1 by m. Uh, therefore, uh, if you look at it and find out what is the tan of that angle then you find that tan of the angle is actually 1 by square root of m infinity square minus 1. Okay. So, uh, now uh, this uh, shows uh, that these angles or these uh, lines are nothing but Mach waves. Okay. So, in supersonic flow if uh, mm, you have a linearized supersonic flow this is uh, now linearized it is a wave equation then uh, there are uh, particular lines along which uh, information propagation happens or there is a solution propagates in certain lines and uh, these lines are uh, nothing but Mach waves and Mach waves we have introduced very early on in the class. Now we see the uh, actual uh, implications of those uh, waves. Uh, so, in any general arbitrary um, change or uh, a initial profile is propagated along the uh, Mach waves. Okay. Uh, there, there are two of them because you have x minus lambda y and x plus lambda y. So, in general there are both left running Mach waves as well as uh, right running um, Mach waves. Okay. So, uh, uh, the idea here is uh, supersonic flow, uh, the uh, velocity perturb uh, the perturbation velocity potential equation becomes like a wave equation and the wave equation is hyperbolic. This, so, this is inconsistent with the uh, general characteristics of uh, uh, the flows that we saw uh, that uh, steady supersonic flow is hyperbolic in nature even you find the same thing in the velocity perturbation equations also. Uh, so, similar to uh, the subsonic uh, flow we are interested in trying to find out what is the pressure over the surfaces and therefore, we can calculate what are the forces that is occurring on such uh, surfaces examples like air foils and so on. Uh, so, now that we have a, a general uh, solution f of x minus lambda y and g of x plus lambda y. Let us see what uh, we can achieve from them. By a uh, differentiation you can uh, take for uh, letting uh, g equal to 0 you can just uh, take f of x minus lambda y and you get 
uh, u prime is uh, dou phi by dou x and v prime is dou phi by dou y uh, well u prime is uh, f prime uh, that is the differentiation of f v prime has a lambda associated it with it because now the variable is x minus lambda y so if you compare these two equations uh, we can uh, see that uh, u prime is v prime by lambda negative v prime by lambda okay so this is what uh, we get okay and uh, uh, we know the boundary condition at the surface of the airfoil that is it should be tangential so dy by dx the velocity is uh, tangential to 3 is v prime v infinity plus u prime u prime is very small so this is equal to v prime by v infinity okay so and uh, dy by dx is and tan theta is approximately so we are looking at small angles small perturbation okay so therefore we get v prime is uh, v infinity multiplied by uh, theta uh, it is dy by dx dy by dx is nothing but tan theta but tan theta is uh, approximately equal to theta for small angles so u prime becomes minus v infinity theta by lambda now uh, we had seen in the previous class that cp uh, for small perturbation can be written as uh, 2 u prime minus 2 u prime by v infinity so now uh, the u prime value that we had uh, just uh, arrived at which is v prime by minus v prime by uh, lambda if we substitute into uh, this equation we get cp is equal to 2 theta by square root of m infinity square minus 1 so here we get a very important uh, result um, so what we find here is that um, uh, the pressure on the surface is uh, just related to the angle of the surface at that particular point or so it's it's like a local surface incl inclination uh, uh, that is required if we know the uh, uh, equation of the surface okay some equation uh, of the airfoil uh, then uh, its uh, pressure at any point uh, in a supersonic flow in the domain of linearized supersonic flow that is under small perturbation theory the, which implies uh, uh, thin air foils small angle of attacks okay so under that uh, uh, conditions uh, the uh, pressure depends only on uh, the surface inclination or dy by dx at every uh, point okay now how much does that uh, surface inclination uh, uh, occur with respect to the free stream because here we took the free stream to be uh, parallel to x axis okay so uh, this is a very uh, important result so um, if we want to uh, find out what should be the forces on uh, such uh, in on uh, typical bodies for example here it's a biconvex airfoil is uh, uh, shown um, which is symmetric okay so uh, in the initial uh, portion this has um, uh, it has a wedge angle which is small theta so over there uh, initially uh, the angle theta is uh, it is moving the flow towards turning the flow towards itself so it uh, sort of compresses the flow here and therefore and this theta is positive therefore you get um, cp2 theta a by square root of m in square minus 1 here this value becomes positive but on the uh, ba towards the uh, rear part uh, there we find since it's symmetric you you are getting similar theta values but in the negative direction now so this is theta b which is negative mm, so cp is uh, negative so you find that cp is uh, negative okay so uh, this is uh, so in general you can consider uh, many different such shapes uh, earlier we had looked at shock expansion theory and we had looked at uh, diamond airfoil of this kind 
uh, you can consider uh, the same in the context of uh, uh, linearized flows also mm, and this is also uh, straightforward uh, uh, the uh, the uh, relationships will be very similar to what we are uh, discussing over here just right over here uh, but uh, one more uh, thing that one has to understand here is that um, here obviously because um, on the y axis everything is symmetric so it produces uh, no lift okay but uh, at the same time if you look at the x component uh, of the force uh, then you will find that uh, in this case uh, there is a finite uh, drag being produced if you consider uh, uh, symmetric airfoils in subsonic flow invisible irrotational flows then uh, in such cases in those cases there is uh, mm, uh, complete uh, symmetricity so both lift and drag are zero it is uh, the D M Alembert's paradox because it, there the drag is being produced mainly by skin friction, which is not being considered uh, in uh, invisid cases. Okay, invisid uh, results. But here it is an invisid flow. Even if it is an invisid flow, uh, if you integrate on along the x direction, you will find that there is a drag. A drag is created. Okay, that drag is for because if it is a supersonic flow and there are waves and the behavior is completely different from subsonic flow and this is what is often referred to as uh, wave drag okay so it is a pressure based uh, drag wave drag um, and it's not a skin friction uh, drag okay so uh, uh, if you also look at how uh, the CP uh, CP for uh, subsonic flow it is CP by CP naught by square root of uh, 1 minus m infinity square uh, while for supersonic flow this is for subsonic flow uh, for supersonic flow it is 2 theta by square root of m infinity square minus 1. So, as Mach number increases in the subsonic case Mm, you find that uh, higher and higher pressures or higher and higher CP is achieved because 1 minus m infinity square goes smaller and uh, smaller. So, there is an increase here in the subsonic domain, but in the supersonic domain as m infinity decreases it is 1 by m infinity square minus 1 m infinity if it starts increasing this value increases. Uh, therefore, C p will uh, decrease okay. and uh, a comparison of these uh, approaches with uh, more exact uh, theories shows that uh, linearized theories are good uh, for small angles of attack. For example, this is a, a taken from the typical uh, textbook it is from uh, John D. Anderson both these uh, uh, images. And, uh, here they have looked at the difference between linearized theories and more exact uh, solutions and uh, at angle of attack of around 4 degrees uh, there is about uh, 5 percent below that it is uh, very much uh, same as the exact theory. So, um, such equations we can use for small angles of uh, attack. So, or small uh, angles and small angles of attack um, which is thin uh, airfoils small angles of attack okay so uh, but it's a useful uh, theory uh, to quickly evaluate aerodynamic uh, coefficients in both the subsonic and the uh, supersonic uh, domain uh, before we go into other kinds of approaches which have better accuracy so uh, Towards the end of this uh, uh, topic, we look at a typical solution over uh, a, a wavy surface. Uh, if you have a supersonic and a subsonic flow over a wavy surface, something of this kind, then how does how do the solutions 
So, here you have a v infinity over here. Uh, the purpose is to distinguish uh, between what happens in subsonic flows and what happens in uh, supersonic flows, understand the characteristics of these uh, uh, different uh, flows, these different domains and also look at the solution, how uh, solutions uh, in general solutions of the uh, velocity perturbation uh, equation. Here of course, we consider h uh, is very small, so h is small, so because it is a small perturbation. Uh, we are doing supersonic flow, so we will just do the supersonic flow initially and then later on look at um, subsonic flows and see how they compare. And uh, um, here, uh, so we already have seen that in uh, supersonic flows, uh, the uh, um, equation is a wave equation, it is hyperbolic in nature and in general the uh, solution is uh, f of x minus uh, square root of m infinite square minus 1 y plus x plus square root of m infinite square minus 1 y. So, you have two uh, characteristics left running and uh, right running and the appropriate uh, boundary conditions are there uh, which is uh, related to the uh, uh, gradients or dy by dx at the wall. So, you can put the appropriate uh, boundary conditions and solve for uh, phi. So, solution of the wave equation is done. And here uh, for an initial uh, contour which was h cos 2 pi x by L, phi we uh, get as uh, it runs as cos of uh, this uh, uh, along the lines x minus square root of m infinite square minus 1 y. So, uh, you can look at uh, uh, C p and here you find that C p is uh, going as sin of 2 pi x by L, C p at the wall okay. uh, and dou phi by dou x will give you uh, the u velocity uh, that is u prime. Okay. So, you can uh, get that over here and at the wall it will be um, going as sin. So, the wall has a shape which is cos, but uh, C p goes as a uh, sine function. Okay. So, uh, now if we try to uh, look at the physical picture of this uh, uh, problem, uh, what we find is that uh, there are uh, 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 Mach waves uh, that uh, occur along the whole flow domain uh, starting right from the wall going all uh, right up to infinity. And uh, the solution is just uh, moving over this uh, or propagating over this um, particular uh, lines along these uh, uh, characteristic uh, lines. So, um, if you consider the uh, crest, okay. so if you consider the point of the crest and this is y direction, then the solution is actually going along. Uh, a line of this kind. So, the solution is actually symmetric uh, along uh, phi equal or uh, characteristics lines which are x minus square root of m infinity square minus 1. They are not symmetric about uh, y equal uh, or the y axis. Okay, They are not symmetric about um, y axis at any point. Uh, so, they are getting uh, uh, displaced or stretched by uh, a certain amount along this uh, characteristic uh, lines. So, as a consequence of uh, this, um, these uh, effects, so you can see that it is written over here the way the uh, streamlines behave. Um, the consequence is that uh, the pressure, if pressure is integrated over the wall, okay, then you always get a finite drag for this particular um, solution. Also, this solution carries over all the way up till infinity. That is the effect of this wall um, in the supersonic flow is felt along uh, these characteristic lines all through the uh, domain, but only along certain uh, directions. 
and this produces a certain uh, drag ok. This is something that we also saw in the previous uh, discussion that in uh, supersonic uh, flows um, the nature is such that you will get a drag um, uh, even if all things uh, look uh, the geometry looks uh, symmetric um, that is because of the wave nature of the flow. Now, if you consider a subsonic flow of the same uh, problem uh, where the same contour is given, but now this uh, equation is elliptic in uh, nature and uh, the solution uh, if you look at the solution you find that uh, it contains an exponential term. Uh, you have some constants which are v infinity h square root of 1 minus m infinity square but here you have a term a, a e power minus 2 pi by l square root of 1 minus m infinity square y. So, uh, if you look at this term there is a exponential which has a negative uh, term that means uh, this, uh, one, this kind of a function will try to uh, reduce the amplitude as you increase y. So, that uh, effect is there. So, it, you get sin 2 pi x by L. In this case, you see that the C p u prime and uh, further C p, uh, they are also follow the cos uh, function, which is the same as uh, the profile. That means, they are symmetric over the profile, though there will be a uh, phase difference. Okay. So, there can be a phase difference, but it will be Mm, uh, symmetric uh, across the profile. Uh, so, as a consequence if you integrate along the x uh, direction mm, they uh, all the uh, forces will cancel each other and hence uh, you get uh, drag is uh, 0. Mm, so, this is something that again we had discussed earlier in subsonic cases uh, in visit flows um, potential flows. Uh, you do not get a drag uh, due to uh, the pressure effects uh, mainly it is the skin friction drag. Mm, okay. uh, so, uh, that is the uh, consequence here, but uh, the effect is uh, more uh, predominant in the streamlines. You see that there is a term e power something here. Um, so, e power and a function of y some say g of y or q of y not to confuse. So, e power minus q of y. So, this function uh, reduces the um, amplitude as you go uh, away from the wall. So, that uh, at a certain distance the effect of the wall is completely forgotten. Okay. So, if you look at the streamlines they look like this near the wall they follow the wall very much, but as you go further and further away they uh, change and then again they come back to being uh, similar to the streamline itself. The uh, distance from the wall um, at which this uh, uh, particular change takes place it varies as Mach number changes uh, and as Mach number is increased the distance also increases. So, at uh, very low velocities uh, it will be quite close to the wall, but at higher velocities the influence is carried quite a long distance away from the wall, but uh, eventually it dies down, but this is not the case with uh, supersonic uh, flows. So, if you now look at uh, uh, the comparisons between the two, uh, the streamlines closely follow the wavy wall are and are symmetric to the wavy wall in uh, subsonic flow, but in supersonic flow uh, the streamlines are symmetric about the Mach waves not the wall. So, uh, and uh, uh, the effect of the wavy wall it dies out as distance increases and that is actually a function of the Mach number in the subsonic case, but in uh, supersonic flow uh, there is no such uh, exponential multiplying the uh, solution therefore, it extends to infinity and uh, here we also know that drag is 0, C p is symmetric to wall in subsonic uh, flows, 
but in supersonic flows drag is finite this is the wave drag that occurs. These differences are arising due to the very nature of these flows in subsonic flows um, it is an elliptic uh, equation and the information propagation happens in all directions. Uh, but in supersonic flow it is a hyperbolic equation and uh, information propagation happens only along certain directions uh, which are uh, Mach waves. So, this uh, uh, with this uh, we come to a close on uh, the uh, small perturbation theory it was useful to understand about subsonic and supersonic flow fields uh, their characteristics how they behave. Uh, what are the differences in the context of uh, inviscid irrotational uh, flows. Uh, now, uh, supersonic flows if you look at uh, supersonic flows they are um, hyperbolic in nature and uh, uh, there are certain methods by which they can uh, these hyperbolic equations can be solved exactly. Uh, uh, they are similar to the wave equation and we saw that uh, there is the D'Alembert solution which follows certain characteristics. Uh, so, the exact uh, uh, velocity uh, potential equation for supersonic flows can be solved in uh, using such methods they are known as method of characteristics. We will look at these method of characteristics for the supersonic flow. Uh, because they are used for certain applications uh, particularly to look at uh, the design of uh, supersonic nozzles the divergent uh, you know that uh, uh, a supersonic nozzle has a convergent and divergent portion uh, that is if you are trying to accelerate from subsonic to supersonic flows. So, a supersonic nozzle is uh, the divergent portion can be designed uh, such that we get uniform flows at the end at the exit and uh, that has to be carefully done by solving the flow field. Uh, so, uh, that is done using uh, method of characteristics and we look at uh, method of characteristics in the coming uh, classes. Thank you.